We have started to record the most recent session of SPCH 1113, Introduction to Public Speaking for the first summer session. The finish line is definitely in sight. Within 48 hours, the first summer session will come to an official conclusion. It is Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. I want to spend a considerable amount of time examining the self-evaluation speech critique. I have a number of materials that are available at my Yahoo email address that I will put on the screen so you know how to format it, how to write it, and how to evaluate your own improvement during the term with that triad, content, delivery, visuals. When it comes to wildcard presentations, we have day one, tomorrow, Wednesday, and day two on Thursday. I told you on a couple of occasions during yesterday's class session that Blackboard is usually cut off to students within 24 to 48 hours after our last official class session, in this case on Thursday. There's no guarantee I will have all of the grades completed by that time. The way it usually works at SAU is that faculty have until the following Monday at 10 a.m. after all of the classes have been completed to submit their final grades. So please double check all of the course videos because anything that you send me in terms of an outline structure that did not include a video has been mentioned. There were a couple of you yesterday that I did indicate you have sent me materials that were outlines, but not necessarily accompanied with a video, or you were sending me something from your phone when I prefer it to be sent on your computer. Depending upon your connectivity issue, that may be the only way that you can do it. For anyone else who still at this point has not sent me anything, it's too late. It's really important in an online course that a student understands it is his or her responsibility to go to Blackboard on a regular basis, access data at the syllabus area, and I am extremely comprehensive, as you're well aware, in the course videos and going to Blackboard, all of the information you need for success, potentially, in this course is available at Blackboard, which is why I always go, as I will in a moment, to the student preview mode and show you in virtually every class period, including today, videos from Blackboard Collaborate Ultra to try to give you as much information as possible to maximize your efficiency as a researcher, as a writer, as a presenter, and as a storyteller. All of that really matters, even if you don't, as you know, because I've said this as well, become a professional communicator, you need to understand the importance of how you look on camera, how you present yourself, the social media modes which you grew up with, Instagram, TikTok, anything that you might use on FaceTime. A lot of these formats are going to be of great help to you whenever you get into the professional world. I'm going to go, as I indicated, to my Yahoo email account in just a couple of minutes and look at self-evaluation speech critiques. But as always, let's return first of all to Blackboard in the student preview mode and take it from that point. All of you know the routine by now. It's not a requirement to attend live. How you can view recorded archives of the course. The instructor information area with a link to my website on top. On the bottom, the SAU business card where you can send material either to my SAU email address or preferably to my Yahoo Everything that you have sent at this point is listed in the online gradebook. So always check that. At the tools area, when you go to Ultra, you can see when you click here the remaining courses. We've got 
Tomorrow's class session, Wednesday, wild card day one, the final day of the term, wild card day two, June 23rd, at the recordings area. And I sent out a tweet on this yesterday. Anything that you need to access, including real-time critiques of demonstrative, informative, persuasive speeches that you have presented, are available in these two windows. Window one, session seven through 16. You get 10 on each page maximum. Those are the rest. Literally, by the time we are completed on Thursday, dozens of hours of information at your disposal. But I think most importantly, always go back to examine the checklist and be your own worst critic in a positive way. How in these areas that we talk about so frequently, can you make an honest effort to improve? The videos that we watched yesterday, exclusively from my YouTube channel, from spring, summer, fall semester, fall intercession of 2020, and spring and first summer session of 2021. The ability to watch the improvement of individuals in their overall professionalism is quite striking. And you're going to see that again today with content, with delivery, with visuals. Use all of those as templates for your long-term improvement, but especially over the next 48 hours because the wild card is something that you should really take a proprietary interest in. And this, officially, as you well know, is the speech order for the next two days. The 22nd and the 23rd. Please make certain that by class time on Thursday, I get all of your information so it can be included for either the day one course video Wednesday or the day two course video on Thursday. And then back to the syllabus, our official itinerary. You know me, I like to be a creature of habit in making certain that there's no misunderstanding or confusion about anything, which includes what we're doing this week. Because today is topic selection and we're going to be looking at a lot of topics and then examining videos or audios in addition to the materials that we showed you yesterday for wildcard speech research. And then coming back to the actual syllabus itself, scrolling through. And I want to do this on at least one more occasion today so everyone realizes that we have the 90, 80, 70 percentile in here and the 10 points from the self-evaluation speech critique maximum or the 10 points from accessing material online when it comes to class participation in the grade center is really huge. That can make the difference between an A or a B or a B and a C. Ideally, nothing below that, but let's remind everyone that the four speeches are all worth 20 points with the self-evaluation speech critique 10 and class participation 10. Go back to the original listing and then return to me for just a moment. When you're going back and viewing videos of this course, I think it's helpful to do it both ways, front to back in its entirety. And I try to be very expansive when it comes to times, as you're well aware. Usually everything's at a minimum of when you take everything together during the term. At minimum, every class session is going to average about an hour and a half, with a good bit of that being analyses of previous presentations that were recorded on either Loom or on YouTube, or as we're doing right now, going through bits and pieces, video highlights, if you will, of what we were just looking at 24 hours ago. All of those presentations, 
from the six most recent times in 2020 and 2021 that I taught Introduction to Public Speaking. And that is going to be next. This is why the relevance of you watching these videos, trying to visualize your own success, how are these people from demonstrative to informative to persuasive to wild card, how are they improving as storytellers with text and image balance on their slides? Are they bullet points or graphics or interactivity to really make certain they are faithful to the concept of extemporaneous speak well, the speaking? They are faithful to the concept of looking at the camera. They are faithful to the concept of listening very closely and getting rid of vocalics, ers, ahs, ums, us, grammar. And you just heard me with a slight stumble. You can't go back and rewind the tape in life. You just keep on going. And if it's not perfect, at least you know it is the best representation of that version of a presentation that you want the class to be aware of and that you're going to share through your email platform. So let's examine what we were looking at 24 hours ago. And we begin. We have started to record the most recent session of SPCH 1113, Introduction to Public Speaking during the first summer session. The final week is here, session 16 of 19. It is Monday, June 20th, 2022. So with Wild Card Week here, what I want all of you to do is to reflect on how you have improved in terms of content, delivery, and visuals over the past five weeks. With the proviso that the final week, it is your concept as to a wild card topic how you're going to put it together. And the speeches we're going to be watching both today and tomorrow with research being today and topic selection being tomorrow for sessions 16 and 17, you're going to be looking at ideally the best representations of presentations from first summer 2021, spring 2021, fall intercession 2020, fall semester 2020, first summer session 2020, and spring 2020. The federal minimum wage has been risen in almost 13 years, and those workers are paying the price. According to, it's, according to CNN on March 22nd, 2022, this picture, this is Brett Man Rock. He's very famous on TikTok, and he has his background of Hawaii which is where he lives. And did you know that TikTok is available in 155 countries and it's also available in 75 different languages. So as you can see, TikTok is very famous. The last thing is the captions. Wherever you are, whatever your video contains, that's what you want to base your caption on. So for example, if I'm at the beach and I have a video, me doing a dancing video on the beach, I would entitle it sunny days and beach waves or something to that effect and i got good references because the two doctors actually know each other and i just have a really good boss over there at westridge and she helped me get in and i actually shadowed for a few weeks over here and he agreed with her that i was a good fit for the job and that's how i got over here it has extremely helped me decide that I want to go on to be a vet. And here's another example of getting to meet sweet dogs and of course people, but I love meeting the animals and making Coco. connections. This is Coco. Come here. Come here. She's the sweetest Come little thing. Good girl. What are you doing? Taylor with getting a head start on a job. In this case, Finley with a smile there at the end for getting a job at a gym. Now let's look at that last quote. I am a very shy person, but from working at the gym, 
I have learned to come out of my shell more and become more outgoing and comfortable to people, to tailor with the animals, in this case, where you can hear the snap of that element going into the computer of the motherboard. And the self-deprecating sense of humor, don't let that go because Mark does a really good job of identifying with the audience. And it's This should give the illusion of either bleeding or having been bleeding. If you want to fan one more time, that is okay. No one is stopping you from fanning your wound. If you are making an old wound, you are going to need your powder one more time. Those are much dirtier than you think. Public Health Protectors, NSF International, say not only is it more likely that your coffee pot has more germs than your bathroom door handle and toilet seat, the coffee pot could also have coliform bacteria. Not cleaning your appliances also leaves old coffee residue and coffee grounds. It also teaches us how to say money. This was seeing the new PlayStation came out every key on the block on screen. The only thing is you have a source that can help you save up for the PlayStation when they don't. True. I made that point because some people <coughs> used to just get it. Their parents are just get the get the PlayStation for them. Yes. I like to make that point about um the math skills because that that's really a good point that I um came over and made. Yeah. Today, in real time, we're at 152. No more of the late night stuff, which was necessary last week. And then the recordings. Everything that we have done with today being posted is your last opportunity to make a positive impression on your classmates and your professor. As for SPCH 1113, Introduction to Public Speaking during the first summer session of 2022. That concludes the recording session for today. What you just looked at were a combination of two things. Some of the individuals who have presented wildcard speeches through the years those areas that I'm discussing are one, bits and pieces of their presentations from yesterday, or at the end of those presentations, my evaluations of them with the one leftover persuasive speech that we played at the end of class from Ms. Wright. Before we get to the self-evaluation speech critiques that students have presented to me in years gone by, I want to return to the syllabus on Blackboard and just remind you of the specific wording that you'll want to put this in. This is the last page of the syllabus. Self-evaluation speech critique, 10 points, due Thursday, June 23rd. A realistic appraisal of personal improvement during the course. Content, delivery, visuals. Let me repeat. Self-evaluation speech critique is worth 10 points. Due Thursday, June 23rd. If you give it to me over the weekend, that's not a problem. I'd indicated a few minutes ago that usually grades are due on Monday of next week at 10 a.m., but I try to get them done no later than Sunday night. A realistic appraisal of personal improvement during the course, content, delivery, visuals. I want to show you a number of examples that have been sent to my Yahoo email address or my SAU address that I moved over to my Yahoo account, primarily because the way in which you're going to write this depends upon your own particular individual approach. There will be some folks 
whenever they're writing these, that will put it into an official document or into a PDF or a Word document. But realistically, you're probably going to be doing it in paragraph form, how you believe you have improved. And I don't like to focus on the negative too much, other than the fact that whenever you have any type of an issue, especially when it comes to maybe misspelling something on a slide, or the design consistency is not uniform, or you've got different types of font that are over photos that are entirely on the slide and you didn't put the photo into a transparency and sometimes the text directly above it is hard to read or you did not put the slideshow mode into officially slideshow and we see all of the individual slides on the far left when you are presenting your loom or you did not do what I ask you to do and in either corner of the screen wherever your webcam is located you need to make certain that you're moving your text around it. More often than not, in a class like this, many of the self-evaluation speech critiques focus to a great degree on how they've improved as a public speaker. A lot of the background data to make you an effective public speaker comes from the content, comes from the visuals. But if anyone is ever, at least in my class, on the borderline of a grade, more often than not, it's going to be determined by your ability as a deliverer of a presentation. How is that coming across in your overall delivery? So that's going to be, to a great degree, the determining factor. Let's go to a variety of different self-evaluation speech critiques over the past couple of years. We will first move to the fall intercession of 2020. This is Carly. And she did something for her self-evaluation speech critique guys that I had not received. She actually sent me photos. I'm going to read her self-evaluation first and then put the photos that you can see at the bottom. I'll put them in the preview mode on the right hand side of the screen. This is December 30th, 2020. Carly Carmony, quote, Professor Reppert, I feel that I have improved insurmountably in my speech giving abilities throughout this course. My entire life I have struggled with public speaking Every time I even thought about having to speak in front of people, I would break out into hives and become very red around my neck. Throughout your course, I could feel my anxiety levels about speaking dwindling down because of the tools and assistance you provided me. I took pictures of the redness I had spoken about. The first one is from the informative speech, and the second is from the wild card. Now keep in mind, these are two speeches apart. The redness totally disappeared because of how much more prepared I was for the speech. The change I've experienced throughout the four speeches has changed my life and my anxiety about giving speeches forever. If it wasn't for your class and instruction, I would still be afraid to speak in public. And for that, I thank you so much, Carly Carmony. The photo on the left is before her informative speech. Look at the right-hand side of the email account. That is Carly breaking out into hives before her informative speech. On the right-hand side, this is two speeches later, what you're working on this week, the wild card. So we go from this with hives on the informative speech to this no hives for Carly's final presentation, the wildcard speech. Here, full screen, informative with hives. Here, full screen, wildcard speech, no hives. And Carly, I do appreciate the kind words that you provided for me in the email, but really, 
it's more a matter of self-confidence for all of you. And whenever we are watching all of the presentations, whether on my website or on my YouTube channel, you will see, if you're doing it properly, a pronounced improvement with a lot of individuals. Now let's continue on to someone else who took the course during the fall intercession of 2020. Let's go to Beth Hervey next. And she is someone like Carly you've seen over the weeks in these classes. Everyone that you've seen here so far or the critiques that you're going to be looking at today are from individuals who have been featured on course videos. This is from Beth Hervey. Dr. Reber, I feel as if I have grown immensely from this course in the fall intercession of 2020. Going into this class, I most definitely did not expect the act of giving the speech via camera to take as much perfecting as it did. I did not realize how much difficulty I would have learning to look directly at the camera compared to looking continuously around the room as I am used to when giving a speech in person. Remember, I talked a couple of days ago about the oscillating fan effect in a face-to-face -face course. It made me realize how more than likely I often do not make direct eye contact in more intimate situations, such as job interviews, which is a great realization that I am glad that I have made in working on correcting early. The act of being able to speak well to a camera is also more likely a skill I will use within my future career as a teacher, especially in the times we are living in currently. I did not realize how often I am unclear with my words until this class. I realized that I struggle to control my southern sounding gonas and wanas the minute that I start to talk in a manner that is not directly read off a presentation slide. Considering that this manner of speaking, one that does not consist being off a PowerPoint slide, but from my knowledge and heart, it is the most common technique that I will be using at my future job as a teacher. It is vital that I recognize that my Southern style speech will need continuous work in order to best be understood. From this class, I feel as if I have gotten better at making eye contact, controlling my speech, and having less and less gonas and wanas now that I am more aware. Overall, this class has opened my eyes to many things within my speaking ability that I plan to continuously work on in my life and that I am thankful to you, Dr. Reppert, for teaching me so many good skills that will follow me in my future. That was from Beth Hervey. So in the case of Carly, whom I read first with the photos and Beth, in all of the course videos, these two individuals have been seen. In addition, to the next person on the list, Finley Blair. You've seen Finley more than once. Hi, Professor. I feel I have learned a lot in this class. In the past, I have been very uncomfortable speaking about things in presentation form because I lack confidence. But through this course, I have been able to gain confidence in speaking about things that I am passionate about. In the beginning, I had trouble with technology, but throughout the course, I was able to learn how to properly use Loom and use YouTube, along with getting more comfortable with Google Slides and figuring out different features for templates. Now remember, Finley was one of the first people to use Slides Go. The TikTok presentation that you saw yesterday from First Summer 21 with Essence Thomas, I believe also used Slides Go. In my first presentation, I had volume issues and was unable to figure out how to raise the volume on YouTube, but after trying, I was able to do so. In addition, I have grown to be more comfortable in front of the camera when previously I was not comfortable at all, and I hated taking videos of myself. I will definitely take the confidence I develop and use it in other classroom settings. Finley, by her own self-awareness, in my mass communication courses. And as I've told you on more than one occasion, she just graduated with a mass comm degree. She was in a number of my classes and by nature, she is a very quiet person and is someone who really brought her personality out by being on camera so much in this class. Now let's examine someone else 
whom you've also seen on more than one occasion, very well could see today. Jordan Walker. These are all from fall intercession of 2020. Professor Reppert, I was very nervous about taking your class, but it has been very helpful. I feel that I am more confident when speaking in public than I was before. I am more cautious on making sure that I am pronouncing my words correctly and make sure that I am making eye contact. Overall, I feel that I have improved from my first speech to my last speech. Thank you so much, Jordan Walker. So have you seen from Finley, from Carly, from Beth, from Jordan, sometimes individuals are going to be more or less expressive when it comes to writing self-evaluation speech critiques. I could go in any direction here, but I am going to go back and scroll through materials now from the fall semester of 2020, which ended early. So fall semester of 2020 will be roughly just before Thanksgiving. Here is Merrick Barrett. You saw his presentation yesterday on motherboards and big hands. You saw his informative speech earlier during the term on VARC learning styles. I'm not going to read all of this, but as you can see, depending upon the openness of the individual writing the self-evaluation speech critique, they might be a tad longer, they might be shorter. So let's just go to the last paragraph. Actual lastly, quoting now, thank you for your methods of class. It's been hard to navigate COVID with work and commuting to school. The lectures, presentations being recorded helps a lot so I can plan my Friday afternoons and weekends to get school work churned out while I work during the week. It's helped a ton and I appreciate your style and teaching a lot. If you could please let me know if anything needs to be done for the persuasive speech in case Google Drive is acting up or I got my sharing permissions closed for some reason or if I completed the mark, missed the mark, or missed it on the self-evaluation. Thank you, Merrick Barrett. And then when he is writing up here, some of the things that he said included, quote, my content as a whole I think improved a fair amount. I kept getting so sidetracked on the points I wanted to make, and I think this is because I knew the content and how it's become a job and a career I'm trying to break away from. And then we get down here near the bottom. I managed to get real acquainted with Google Slides as a result. I wasn't happy with my wild card picture ratios, but I think that is more of a skill of a speech class that can be honed in one, if that makes sense. Adding in the video of the RAM snap, however, was a very big moment in the household to keep in mind. He's not the only person that we saw yesterday. I intentionally played Taylor Ivey's speech from the replay yesterday, just a few minutes ago, a bit longer, so we could see the end of her speech where she also, like Merrick, when you hear the snap in motherboards and big hands, snapping in that part of the motherboard where you can hear it from a cell phone, you see her talking to the dog, dancing around right during her conclusion. So if you want to include video, that's okay. Again, adding in the video of the RAM snap, however, where I have the cursor, was a very big moment in the household. I messed up my first few takes that got in that far before I restarted because I watched the video a few times after. Let's go back to another fall semester 2020 critique. And I'm doing this for a reason, because this is going to transition into our first YouTube video of the day in the respect that it wasn't uploaded to my YouTube channel from a Loom recording. It was actually recorded and posted on a YouTube channel. Matt Huffman's wildcard speech is what we're going to be watching in a couple of minutes. But before we do that, let's examine his self-evaluation speech critique. Quote, Professor Reppert, I believe that I have improved over the last several weeks. The last two years doing broadcasting for our athletics at the local school has been a tremendous help. I was used to being behind the camera and it was pretty nerve wracking at first to be in front of it. As I stood in front of the camera more and more, I became comfortable with it. I would have had trouble at the beginning of the year speaking, but I believe that I got better. 
on my vocalics. I was also able to not only use in this class, but we started a new segment on our live broadcasts where we were in front of the camera and addressing the audience live before games. I wouldn't have done that if not for what I learned in your class. Thank you for your instruction and help along the way. Matt Huffman. We're going to be watching Matt's speech first in addition to a couple of other spring 2020 videos. His was fall semester of 2020. We'll get to a couple of spring 2020 videos, but I wanted to show you that all of the evaluation speech critiques and all of the presentations, whether they were originally sent to the Yahoo or to my SAU address, which is why you see my name, because I forward them here, as you know, everything that you send me is going to be available at that location. Next item on the agenda, before we watch more wildcard speeches, chronicling individuals' improvement and professionalism as public speakers. Let's go to now Google Drive and give you examples of what I have posted there and on my website of wildcard speech outlines, audio, and video presentations. I don't have as many because I only started this a few years ago circa 2017 in the summer. Here we have wild card speech outlines that include asexuality, charmed, do not play with alligators, empire, exorcism, from Panthers to Razorback, someone right out of high school taking this course at SAU and then transitioning to Fayetteville in the fall of 2017. Have a little faith. That was from someone who was overcoming some medical challenges. The O.J. Simpson murder trial. Selling my shame, how someone was coming back from personal issues. The myths of being a social worker the evolution of makeup, why it is important to tip servers. And then we get into audio presentations because as you know, some people don't have webcams, building habits, classes of dogs, glioblastoma, which is I believe a brain tumor, my passion for basketball, the impact balloons have on marine life. That was really fascinating. Creating TikTok videos, we saw that yesterday. Dating someone with depression. De-differentiated chondrosarcoma, that's from Carly. So before this video, she took the photo which showed no hives. Get a job at a gym. We saw that yesterday from Finley Blair. Getting a head start in your career. The videos look a little bit different when they're posted on Google Drive or on my website. That is Taylor Ivy. We just saw little bits and pieces of that today when we were looking at yesterday's class. Having a personal relationship with God. How to build credit. How to make great coffee. We watched that yesterday. How to write a check. Importance of female fronted rock. Making special effects. We saw that yesterday. Minecraft. Miniature schnauzers. Whenever you look over my shoulder, whenever you are looking at me, you'll notice that there is a miniature schnauzer pillow. In this house for many years, there were miniature schnauzers. Motherboards and big hands. That's what Mark was talking about in his self-evaluation speech critique. One Direction, someone who was obviously a pop culture fan. 
Run by Faith. I believe that's Jordan Walker. We may watch that. We just read her critique a moment ago. Smokey the Bear. What makes a sport a sport? These format differently on my Google Drive. They look slightly different, but these are all the videos, including what we just looked at from yesterday, June 20th. A total as of right now, 16 of the 19 videos are available right here. A wide variety of unique wildcard topics. And sometimes, as we saw from Matt Huffman's self-evaluation speech critique at the end of the fall semester of 2020, you're going to be able to take the skills you learn in this class. That additional confidence can help you in other media venues. That's what Matt talked about for his wild card speech in fall 2020. He's involved with the broadcast team for Hector Wildcat Nation. And that is going to be the first wild card speech that we see today that was recorded on his YouTube channel. As you know, whenever we watch anything that was originally recorded on YouTube, I always have the closed captioning on. And this is fascinating because you're going to see experimentation that Matt is using for his final speech. It's not Loom. It looks like it, but he's actually experimenting with television production methods, talking about Hector Wildcat Nation and being involved with the high school football broadcast team. Here we go. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Huffman. Tonight, I'm doing my wildcard speech on a behind the scenes look live stream edition. Myself and another gentleman that I uh, teamed up with, we do the live streaming for our local high school. So tonight, I'm going to be giving you a rundown of everything that we use and uh, how we put it together. And then at the end, close to the end of the speech, I will be showing a few clips of how we how everything looks when it's all together. But kind of want to start off first, just showing you everything that we use. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is our audio. This is uh, our Behringer Euphoria UM2 audio interface. It allows us to control all of the audio through this uh, and it uses, allows us to use the wireless headsets that I'm talking on right now. That way we're not connected to anything. We can move around wherever we're at. I can control the volume. It also has a plug uh, port on the back that if I wanted to put some headphones on and listen to uh, our, uh, our volume that way, I could do that. The next one is our... Uh, Trevor wireless headsets, like I said, is what I'm talking on right now. And what these do is there's a, a jack that plugs into our audio interface. Um, it comes with dual headsets, dual lapel mics. We like to use the headsets because it just the the lapel mics they pick up a lot of ambient noise. Um, these allow us, since they're just right here at our, our mouth, allows us to, for everybody to hear us a lot better. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to move on to our HDMI capture card. What this does is it hooks up from the camcorder into the computer and it turns the gameplay signals from the camera into digital data. Next we're going to talk about is our camera. Our camera, we, we run a 
Panasonic HCV180K full HD camera camcorder. It records in 1080p and has a 50 times zoom, so we can really so on the football field we can really zoom in and uh, pick up a lot of the action. You know, if there's a fumble or anything like that, we can zoom in and and really pick it up. Uh, it also has uh, some BSI sensors which allow us to film in low light. Sometimes at different stadiums, different uh, places that we go to, the, the light's just not that great. So this allows us to pick up more of that light to where we can make a, a better picture. The next thing we're going to talk about is our software. Uh, we run OBS, which is Open Broadcaster Software. It allows us to uh, switch between different uh, scenes, different graphics, uh, different cameras, different audio. Uh, if I wanted to run audio from the camcorder, I could do that. Or from the microphones, I could do that. Or as you've been seeing, I've been switching back and forth from my laptop camera to the camcorder. Um, so that it, it makes it great. We can set up multiple cameras and uh, get different angles. And I just I love that aspect of it. It also allows us to record and stream straight to Facebook, YouTube, anywhere we want to live stream to, and it, that that makes it great right there and and the uh, the other thing is it's free so now I'm going to show you some clips this was from Friday night this last Friday night uh, from our game here at Hector the first one is going to be our defense and then the second one will be our offense so I hope you enjoy can really change the momentum of a game right here a big fourth down in the fourth quarter, you got to lead. Find a way to get off the field, get your offense to the ball. See if our offense can grow down, put some more. Because our offense points. has been playing awesome. They have they been playing much better this second half. Coaches made some adjustments. As we get into the last 20 seconds of the speech, what you'll notice is Matt got so excited about trying to get those highlights in, he forgot to turn his audio back on. So here we are in the last few seconds of his speech, and I'll pause it at 29. But what I will also do is go back and play those last two bits of video primarily because he is incorporating, like I said, television production techniques that are similar but not loom into his overall presentation. That's why if you want to have interactivity, this is certainly one way of doing it. Let's go back. Here you can see where the videos start. So let's get right to the point where those two videos play and how he is transitioning from being on camera here to playing the two video clips. First is the defensive stop. Second is the touchdown that cements the victory for the Wildcats. Here we go be our offense. So hope you enjoy. Can really 
change the momentum of a game right here. A big fourth down. It looks like he's shooting right he off of a monitor, a field, but it's still pretty ball. clear. See if our offense can grow down, put some more. Because our offense has been playing awesome. They have. They've been playing much better this second half. Coach has made some adjustments. Of course, what you like there with Matt serving as the analyst is the spontaneity because that's what makes a broadcast call unique, whether it's a hometown broadcast or something that is at the national level, the spontaneity in the moment, which is what I'm trying to have all of you do when you are making presentations. Now, when you go back to what he was saying in his self-evaluation speech critique that these broadcasts the television broadcast that he's been involved with and what they were doing with the high school football games where they were adding some pregame material, this course had been a big part of improving his self-confidence. So not only are you going to become a more self-aware public speaker, but ideally in the long run, you're going to be someone who exhibits much more self-confidence the beauty about playing all these videos, as you're well aware. Matt was fall semester of 2020. The next two speeches that you are going to see intentionally are from the spring of 2020, recorded just like him. When you are putting something on YouTube, it won't necessarily look exactly the same as Loon, but still equally effective. Someone that you saw earlier in the semester Kylie Nee for her informative speech on heartworm treatment for dogs. She has another canine related speech for the wild card. You'll recall that whenever she was doing the informative speech for the wild card, Kylie was sitting at a desk in a veterinary clinic. In this case, she is standing very similar to what we saw with Mackenzie Turner a couple of weeks ago for two of her presentations, and we saw informative and persuasive speeches from her, which were recorded in the living room of her parents' home in Texas. And that's what this reminds me of. But Kylie is putting together a presentation that is stopping puppy mills, and here we go. I'm Kylie Mee, and tonight I'm going to be talking to you about puppy mills, starting with what they, what they are in general, and going through why they're bad, what conditions accompany these situations, and then circling back around to what we need to do to stop them. So what is a puppy mill? A puppy mill is a commercial breeding facility that is mostly for your purebred dogs that emphasizes on quality or on quantity, not quality, which means that they're trying to push as many puppies out as possible to gain the most amount of profits. Um, why are puppy mills bad? Most of these animals are kept in poor living conditions because the regulations surrounding needs are very lax and what regulations are there are not enforced and most of these animals suffer from health conditions that usually are lifelong the puppy mill project is something that is under the well animal welfare act that sets the guidelines for the conditions of 
puppy mills. These guidelines include but are not limited to the year that there is no limit on the number of animals that can be on the property, which means that there can be up to 200 animals living in one room, which not only for space confinement is a problem, but it is also a problem when in the transmission of diseases from animal to animal. There is no set number of caretakers, so these animals can be alone for long periods of times. So there's also no set amount of exer there's no exercise guidelines for these dogs, which means that they can be in a kennel for 24, 24 hours a day as long as that kennel meets the size regulations, which is six inches larger than the animal, not including the tail. These cages can also be stacked with flooring that has holes in it, which also facilitates the transmission of organisms such as intestinal parasites. These guidelines are there, but not strictly enforced, and they are also not effective enough to keep these animals safe. So there are health issues that surround these animals that are living in puppy mills or coming out of puppy mills. There are hereditary diseases associated with breeding purebred lines only, and there, as the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals lists, has a list of conditions that are associated with puppy mills, which include epilepsy due to neglect and stress, heart disease, kidney disease, musculoskeletal disorders, which relates back to the hereditary disorders that can be passed down through a purebred line, and deafness due to yeast infections in the ears. Along with health conditions, there is behavioral consequences of puppy mills, which include them being harder to train because of the anxieties that they have so associated with training processes. So they're harder to look, teach to leash walk, to house train, and to crate train. They're also prone to anxiety and social, social situations, including going to the vet's office, going to the groomer, and that kind of thing. These animals are also more prone to have obsessive compulsive disorders, which includes chewing, licking, and, and eating. They can also be more aggressive than animals, than other animals. And this topic hits so close to home for me because I work in a vet clinic and I see the animals that come out of these puppy mills. And it's so hard for us to get over the hump to get them into a happy forever home and to have a happy life. So this is why we really need stronger guidelines to be set for these facilities as well as actual enforcement for them. Thank you. Now the reason each of our first two presenters have so much source credibility is that first of all, in the case of Matt, the extensive experience that he brings to the course with all of the Bradley High School experience is extremely helpful. Then in the case of Kylie, it's the same thing. Whenever, and let's get to the last minute of her speech. One of the other things you'll notice is if you're recording on YouTube, the audio is not necessarily going to be as loud as it would ordinarily be like what we're doing right now because we're just physically closer to the microphone or, or the camera. So it's going to be a little bit more hollow, even with our third presenter coming up in a couple of moments. But pay close attention to the end of Kylie's speech. Listen and look at the text at the bottom because what her experience is in the veterinary field gives her enormous credibility to talk about this subject. Here we go. And eating, they can also be more aggressive than animals, than other animals. And this topic hits so close to home for me because I work in a vet clinic and I see the animals that come out of these puppy mills. And it's so hard for us to get over the hump to get them into a happy forever home and to have a happy life. So this is why we really need stronger guidelines to 
be set for these facilities as well as actual enforcement for them. Thank you. The fact she works in a clinic in the same way that we've got Matt with a lot of experience with the television broadcast for the high school football is really important. In his case, I didn't talk about it at the time, outstanding storytelling through his visuals. Same thing here with Kylie. She sets the stage very clearly for the dangers of puppy mills. Those are two of our presentations for the day. The third, like what you saw with Kylie, is also from that Monday night course that had to change course very quickly because of the pandemic. This is our next presenter. This is Francine, and we will put her on the screen. You saw her earlier in the term for a different speech. I believe after the pandemic, she went to California. She did not have the capability to set up visuals in the same way that others did. So she's basically going straight into the webcam. She's still very effective and thoughtful as a public speaker. I was looking at this before class, or I should say I was checking this out during Kylie's presentation. So we will just go ahead and play it with the closed captioning. Why you should delete social media. It is persuasive in nature, but it's okay. This is her wild card. Hi, my name is Francine Ansley, and I will be talking about why you should just ditch social media completely altogether. So recently during this quarantine, I did just that. I deleted Snapchat, I deleted Instagram, Twitter, I deleted any social media. I believe that social media makes people focus more on others. Um, to back this up, when people are using social media excessively, they tend to focus more on others' accomplishments than their own. People seem to focus on how successful others are and tend, and tend to compare others' lives with their own. What social media users rarely realize is that the lifestyle showcased on social media by their friends and peers is rarely um, a steady reflection of what's actually going on in their lives. Those are only the highlights of their best moments. And even if those are their best moments, you shouldn't compare them with your own accomplishments. People's happiness depends on others. Basing your existence around external validation through social media is a dangerous trap which many people frequently fall into. You should not base your own happiness concept on others' likes and love reacts. Rather, you should look at yourself and live in the moment and analyze it if it makes you really feel fulfilled. If you really want to have documentation of what's going on and you want to capture those moments, that's fine. You can take pictures and take videos, but you don't need to have everyone see what you're doing. Just because you don't post it on Instagram or Snapchat doesn't mean that it didn't happen. Social media causes a distorted version of reality. What you see online is rarely reality. All we can see online is these platforms and all they showcase are people's happy moments, the moments they've chosen to let the public see. This makes us feel conscious about ourselves and makes us doubt our own happiness and what we're doing in our own lives. So social media makes your life too public. Happiness is not the only vulnerable aspect of your life when you use social media. When you're using social media excessively, your privacy is also at risk. For many people, exposing their lives to strangers online is part of daily routine. The more strangers that request people, people just accept them because the more followers they have, that means the more likes and comments that they'll receive on their platforms, making other people see how popular they are on social media. Social media prevents people from interacting with loved ones. Posting happy birthday on someone's timeline on Facebook or sending them a message on Snapchat isn't really sincere or genuine, especially since those apps already give you a notification when it's someone's birthday. If you really want to 
let that person know that you care about them, then you should just see them in person or call them, or if you have to, at least text them, not engage through social media. It's meaningless. Social media users have a way more difficult time of moving on with their lives. Letting go, letting go of past things can be difficult, especially if it's a breakup with your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, and social media makes it even harder. Having a hard time getting over your ex, it's because of social media. You're constantly seeing pictures of them enjoying life on their own and even with someone else. It can be difficult to process and accept. Also, when the time comes to buckle up and sort out your own life, you can be influenced by your whole social feed full of pictures having fun, um, people enjoying their lazy Sundays and enjoying the little things in life. You may feel encouraged to postpone important steps in your life and have another day off for yourself as well. So people may argue, well, hey, isn't social media a way to keep in touch with people and um, to stay in contact and you know share parts of your life? That's what the original purpose of social media was. And if you're that person that really wants to stay in contact with people, but but doesn't know like what to do about the thousands of strangers following you, I would suggest that you delete your all your accounts and make new ones and have it set to private and only accept people that you know that you want to see parts of your life. Um, thank you for listening to this and I hope I encouraged you to let go of social media apps. Thank you. What we have seen with our first three wild card presenters is a likability, a professionalism, an ease on camera. As you're all aware, that just doesn't happen. Whenever we're looking at public speaking, it is formalized conversation. First with Matt second with Kylie, third with Francine. They all come across as individuals who are conversing with you, but in a more professional way than maybe if you were talking with them on campus or before class. That's where the practice comes in. And those three individuals were all on YouTube. Now what we're going to do is to transition into Loom presentations that have been posted to my website. On occasion, you'll have individuals give topics that are personal or autobiographical in nature. And that's what we're going to see next. We saw Jordan Walker earlier during the semester. We also examined her self-evaluation speech critique today. Let's go to Google. You saw my head snap whenever we're doing these live class sessions in the afternoon. Occasionally FedEx comes calling, so that's what happened. With the FedEx person knocking on the door. But here is the listing of presentations that we were examining before. All the way down here to what makes a sport a sport, we'll be taking a look at that. And then some of the other topics down here, and this is where we're going to start. Fall intercession of 2020, and Jordan is going to tell us her life story. Here we go. Hello, my name is Jordan Walker, and I did my wildcard speech on Run by Faith. 
I was diagnosed with migraines. A migraine is a headache of varying intensity, which is caused by nausea and sensitivity to light and sound. When I was in first grade, I started to have migraines and the lighting of the classroom began to bother my eyes and I couldn't focus in class. And sometimes my migraines were so bad that I began to vomit. My teacher raised concern and decided to call my mother because my migraines began to become frequently and I couldn't do my classwork. So my mother decides to take me to my pediatrician. My pediatrician runs a CAT scan to see if I have any brain tumors and my results are normal. So she is wondering what is triggering my migraines. So she refers me to a pediatric neurologist. The pediatric neurologist decides to run more tests and all my test results come normal. One day on the playground, I was playing and I had a severe headache. And all of a sudden I wake up and I'm in the hospital. I have been in the hospital for a week. My parents are very spiritual. So they began to pray. And I knew I had to pray too because I want to get rid of these migraines. So now they refer me to a neurologist. My neurologist takes a different approach. My neurologist tells me I need to exercise, eat a healthy diet and avoid caffeine, make sure I'm getting plenty of rest. I always loved basketball, but I knew I couldn't play basketball due to my headaches. So a few months go by and I'm having less frequent migraines. So my doctor approves me to play sports. So I decide to try for the basketball team and I make it. I was so thrilled because after all these challenges that I've been going through at a young age, I can actually play a sport. And then everything is going fine. Then all of a sudden my migraines are coming back. I go see my neurologist. He tells me that I need to do a less strenuous sport or activity. So he suggests that I can go walk or run the track. So I hated running during basketball practice. So I was like, how is this gonna work? So I decided to go to my middle school track and start running. At first I was really exhausted. I was like, how can I do this? But I know I had to do it because I want to get better and make my migraines go away. So I started running. I was very relaxed, stress-free, and my headaches seemed to go away. So I was like, yes, this might be the coping method that I needed. Now it's time to shine. My track career is starting to take off. Although I've been playing basketball, I've made Defensive Player of the Year, and I also made Shreveport Times Athlete of the Week. But I knew that track was my passion and that I wanted to run at collegiate level. So I decided to run summer track before my upcoming senior year because I want to get more exposure and maybe get more scholarship offers. And I actually qualified for the Junior Olympics and I was so thrilled because it was my first time running track and I knew that since a young age I was suffering from migraines and then now look at me now and I was doing wonderful. Last run, my first and last track meet. I was so thrilled that it's my senior year. I've been working hard to make sure that I meet everything that I need to do for my senior year because I want to make sure my time was faster and I was in great shape. So my first track meet was in March and who knew that that was gonna be my last time running. Schools were closed, the whole world was shut down due to the pandemic. And I had lost faith because I knew I had worked hard and it was all for nothing because I wouldn't ever get to run again my high school career. And then recruiting had stopped. Everything was on pause due to the pandemic. SAU was my last visit before the pandemic. And every all the other offers were trying to do virtual. And I knew it wasn't gonna be right if it was just virtual because I wanted to actually be there. And then I was gonna get the great experience of being on campus like I did at SAU. But I did accomplish a lot during my four years. I was a National Honor Society, student council, FCA, Spanish club, and I made Miss Northwood. Miss Northwood is based off your GPA and all the organizations that you are involved in. And I knew something was gonna come good out of this. I get a call from a reporter saying he wants to do an article on me and publish it. So I was like, yes, 
I've been praying for this time. Now something's good is coming out all of this negative energy due to the pandemic. My article title was Jordan Walker Dances for Praise, Runs for College. The Jordan Walker Dances for Praise is when I was younger, I praised dance and I always had God with me. And then I get to run for college. Where faith led me. I committed to SAU, which was the best decision of my life. I'm a student athlete and I'm a future cyber criminologist. Don't let your past determine your future. That is why I continue to run by faith. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my story. What you just saw from Jordan is a perfect example of how individuals can improve. Let's mute the audio and just take it literally anywhere. Look at the confident manner in which she is addressing the webcam. Audio is down, telling her life story, design consistency, as we've seen with Matt, with Kylie, the professionalism, even though it was just Francine on camera, all of that professionalism, all of that poise, the authentic nature of your respective personas, ideally, is going to come through if you're doing it properly for the last presentation of the term. And I think it's safe to say that all of these individuals have done so, including Jordan. Very nice job. Which now brings us to another sporting related speech from someone that you have seen in the past. This is Madison. This is also available exclusively in a loom on my website. We saw this a few minutes ago before playing Jordan's. There's Jordan's run by faith and Almost next door from spring of 2021 is Madison. Like what you saw with Jordan's presentation, she has decided to place her webcam for Loom at the bottom left hand portion of the screen, where I think she left it during the entire spring 2021 semester. And let's check on what makes a sport a sport. Hi, my name is Madison Pogue, and this is my wildcard speech on what makes a sport a sport. I've always grown up around sports, so this has always kind of been subconsciously brewing in my head. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about it today. So a little disclaimer before we get started. If you believe that something is a sport that I do not, or vice versa, it's okay. It's all completely based on what you believe or what you feel is a sport or what is not a sport. Don't let me tell you what is or what is not. <clears throat> but I'm going to explain myself on why I feel the way that I feel about certain sports. And I just hope that you will hear me out. And yeah. So I'm gonna start off right off the bat, giving you my opinion on what is a sport and what is not a sport. So. Some sports include basketball, baseball, track, um, football, all of that sorts of stuff. And then non-sports, so this includes cheerleading, e-gaming, and gymnastics, which will probably make some people upset. I'm going to explain myself, but yeah, those were the first three that came to my head, so I had to put them on here. But if you don't know what e-gaming is, it's where you literally are playing video games. And some people consider that a sport. Um, if you do, I'm not saying anything bad about that. I'm just saying I'm going to explain why I don't personally believe that that should be considered a sport. So the three main points that I'm going to be talking about are uniforms, fact versus opinion, and winners versus losers. So these are just the three main characteristics I feel like each sport should have and I'm going to go in more depth now. 
So uniforms. This is super basic. Um, even things that aren't sports have uniforms, but I just thought that this was actually a key component in sports. So uniforms, everyone should look like that is on the same team. So shirts, pants, shorts, socks, sometimes hats. I have a couple examples. The top is a baseball team and the bottom is a soccer team. Those are just some examples of uniforms for some teams and those are professional teams. So you can kind of see just like different examples of uniforms, but I feel like everyone should look the same or at least similar so that everyone can know that they're a part of a team and that they are together and that they are competing together. So we're moving on to based on fact, this is the main point that I feel like is what makes me think, is that a sport or is it not? So I personally believe that Opinion should not be the main focus when it comes to who wins or who loses a competition. So, for example, in track, if someone crosses the finish line first, there is someone there tracking the time that it takes them to get from point A to point B. So, if someone finishes first, they can go and they can look at the times and compare the first person across, the second person across, the third person, and so on and so forth and prove that the first person across the finish line won over all the other people because they had a faster time than everyone else. So on the flip side of that, gymnastics and cheerleading. So we're gonna take cheerleading, for example. When they do, the when they cheer and when they stun and all of that stuff at competitions and everything like that, they're getting judged based on the judges' opinions on whether they're better at certain things than other people, which I feel like is based solely on opinion or at least mostly on opinion. So I feel like that kind of disqualifies it from being a sport compared to other things such as baseball, basketball, track, volleyball, and those sorts of sports. And then another kind of basic thing kind of go along with the uniforms is that there should be a winner and there should be a loser. Competition is a part of sports. You need to compete to win and that should be a big part of sports. I've always grown up with the thought process of everyone cannot be a winner. So you want to strive to be the best you can be so that you can be the winner because no one likes to lose. And that's just what sports are about. So yeah. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope I didn't make anyone too upset. And that's the end of her presentation. We're going to do the same thing with Madison that we did with Jordan. Let's just take literally any part of her speech. And by the way, let me do this for just a moment. Whenever you're near the end of the presentation in the countdown in reverse on Loom, we've seen this with other presenters who use the backwards countdown from five. But it's so helpful because there's her webcam, and right there is the timer. It is so convenient in terms of time management to know where you are so you're not going to get cut off at the end. Let's take this at any point, like with Jordan, and just play it. The ease in which all of the individuals, and we've seen five so far, three, recorded on YouTube to Jordan and Madison, recorded on Loom. All of them are so likable, their personalities jump through the screen. And that ideally is going to be the essence of a public speaker. You want to listen to what Madison has to say. You want to listen to what Jordan has to say. And in reverse chronological order, the three YouTube presentations where we had Francine, and Kylie, and Matt. Same thing. You can tell Madison is an old pro when it comes to the ring light because she has that set up perfectly. She fills up the screen with her face. It looks like her light is set up more at the shoulder level because there really aren't any shadows. So my guess is the light is a little bit lower. Mine, I have mounted on top of my 31 inch monitor. It looks like hers is down a little bit, but 
she's very easily understood. She's very expressive with her hands, her eyes, all of that matters. And Jordan, our other Loom individual, was the same way. Perfect way to pause the video. She is opening herself up, which is really important to be a quality public speaker. Five down, two to go. The other two are also available on my website that I'm showing through Google Drive. Remember Carly Carmony, the individual who for her informative speech took that photo with hives and then before this speech, she did not have hives. I suppose for that reason, I can forgive her for not going into the slideshow mode for her medically based wild card speech. And that's where we're going to go next. This was something that hit very close to home, a very serious topic that Carly wanted to discuss. It is de-differentiated chondrosarcoma. It's not in the slideshow mode, but it is something that it was of great importance for her to discuss. And let's check it out. This is Carly. Hi, my name is Carly Carmony, and this is my wildcard speech for SPCH 1113 in the fall intercession. I chose to do an informative speech over dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma. What is it? Chondrosarcoma is a bone sarcoma, which is a primary cancer composed of transformed cells in cartilage. Cartilage is a specialized connective tissue that allows bone to develop and grow. Chondrosarcoma starts within your pelvis, shoulders, ribs, or in the long bones of your arms and legs and can move all over your body. Dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma is defined as a high-grade non-chondroid sarcoma associated with a low-grade cartilaginous tumor. They make up approximately 11% of all chondrosarcomas and are among the most aggressive cancers described. These tumors generally occur in patients typically over the age of 50. There are different types and survival rates of chondrosarcomas, like grade one, grade two, grade three, and dedifferentiated. The survival rate for grade one is 90% and the reoccurrence rate is low. Grade two, the survival rate is 81% and the reoccurrence rate is fair. Grade three has a survival rate of 29% and the reoccurrence rate is quite high. Dedifferentiated is the worst chondrosarcoma of all and it has a survival rate of less than 10% and the reoccurrence rate is very high. The signs and symptoms of chondrosarcoma. If there is a sharp pain where the tumor is located, a large lump at the site of the pain, redness or swelling at the site of the pain or tumor, decreased use of that body part or limping, pain becomes worse at night. Those are all signs and symptoms and I attached a photo of what chondrosarcoma looks like in the hand whenever it gets to an excessive amount if it's not treated. The statistics of chondrosarcoma. It is estimated that 1,720 deaths of that 1,000 men and boys and 720 women and girls from this disease will occur each year. In adults, chondrosarcoma makes up more than 40% of primary bone sarcomas. Dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma is known to have a poor prognosis. The median survival has been as short as six months, yet patients rarely survive for more than two years. Treatment. Surgery is the primary treatment for chondrosarcomas. The goal is to remove the cancer and a margin of healthy tissue around it. The type of surgery you undergo will depend on the location of your chondrosarcoma. All chondrosarcomas have proven resistant to chemotherapy and radiation, which means it does not help. There is no known cure for dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma. Surgery can help, but it is not common. Is it genetic? The exact cause of chondrosarcoma is not known. There may be a genetic component that makes certain individuals more open to this type of malignancy, but there is no proof. There has been research done on a family of six generations with 114 living members 
46 of these people have multiple exotosis, which means there is some type of bone growth abnormally. My mother's story. This story is very dear to my heart because my mom was diagnosed with dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma at age 30 whenever I was a young girl. She found out that she had it because she was pregnant with my little brother. She refused to have an abortion and decided to have him and then fight after he was out because she could not go through chemo or radiation or surgery with him being still in her stomach. After she had my brother, she passed away a year and a half later, but she fought such a good fight as, as hard as she could. The year that she passed away, there were six people in the United States who passed away from dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma. It is that rare. But she fought as hard as she could. She passed away on April 25th, 2004. She was one of the hardest. She lasts six months at later than the typical person usually would. Thank you so much for listening to my informative speech over dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma. As you've seen over the past couple of days, a wild card speech can be demonstrated can be informative, can be persuasive, can be a combination of them all, or go into a different category. We just noticed with Madison and Jordan, slightly different variations of a theme. And the same thing here where Carly really wanted to talk about the heroic nature of her mother's fight to make certain that her brother was born. And you can tell she passed away in 2004, so she was very, very young. And having the tombstone on as the final visual, whenever she's wrapping things up, does make sense. So in the presentations that we've seen, and we'll do the same thing here that we have with the others that have been recorded on Loom, very calm, very poised, nothing calls attention to itself in terms of eye contact or unnecessary hand movements or touching your face or just realizing that whenever the camera's on, as much as possible, you need to work the camera. You need to make certain that people can understand, empathize this particular, this particular topic. I would appreciate the fact this was recorded in Google Slides. If we could go into the slideshow mode from beginning instead of seeing all of these, but it's still a small thing compared to the relevance of the topic and how she is addressing it. So now let's get to our last video that is a wild card speech. I am going to stick in an additional audio version of a wild card in case any of you don't have access to a webcam. Occasionally, as we saw with Jordan Walker, people want to talk about their personal experiences from an autobiographical nature in a wild card. In this case, you have an individual who wants to talk about issues regarding faith. This is our last wild card speech video that we're going to be examining, and it's called Having a Personal Relationship with God. Actually, let me hold on just a moment. That speech is relevant but the speech I have that is faith-based is different than that. I actually clicked in a different area. Having a personal relationship with God from false intercession of 2020 is an excellent speech, but actually the one that I want is in a slightly different location. It's finding the right church. And I am going to find it here. I thought I had it. Wild card speeches, as you can see, we are going to go to 
an audio version, but I wanted to make certain that I had the right one up on the screen. We've got Smokey the Bear, What Makes a Sport a Sport, Miniature Schnauzers, Motherboards, and Big Hands, Transitions, Dating Someone with Depression, Tipping Servers, Building Habits, Classes of Dogs, Passion for Basketball, Balloons, Dating Someone with Depression, and maybe I have that presentation in a different location. Let's see. Having a personal relationship with God. We may go back to that if I can't if I can't find the speech. I may have placed it in a different location, but you do notice that there are tons of different presentations that you can examine. We'll go ahead and play this because the young man does a nice job with the with the presentation. There's Minecraft, and here is the speech on having a personal relationship with God. Hello, good morning. It is December 30th, 2020. My name is Michael Brewer. My wild card speech is on having a personal relationship with God. Uh, I wanted to talk about this because I think it's something we all need in life. Uh, it's something that, that that has helped me in my life. Um, God is a big deal to me. You know, I, I want to share with y'all, and per, I guess you could call this a persuasive speech on having a personal personal relationship with God. Um, relationship with God is the most important relationship we can have in life. Um, this is, having a relationship with God has uh, helped me in so many ways. Uh, it's helped my family, my friends. Uh, having a relationship with God is like any other relationship that you have with anybody else. But uh, the difference is God can make changes in your life that, that normal people can't make in your life. That's why it's so important to me and why it's important that everyone should have this same relationship. Um, so why is it important to have a relationship with God? Having a relationship with God is very rewarding. Um, God, for, God offers this relationship to everyone. Um, having a relationship with God is simple. It's easy. It's just like having any other relationship with any of your friends or family. Um, God makes this. Um, God makes people better, and and th those who have relationships with Him understands that because He leads them in the right direction. And um, it's important because it it reveals your faith in Him, and it keeps you connected with Him at all times. And God will improve your life no matter what, but having a, 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 a good relationship with him will make it even better. And so let's talk about how to have a personal relationship with God. Um, having a personal relationship with God is like any other relationship. You got to get to know, get to know the person. So you want, one, you want to get to know God and who he is. Um, you want to pray more, read your Bible. Those are ways that you can get to know him and, and, and um, get, get to learn about who he is. You have to, um, secondly, you have to listen to God when he speaks to you. He's always speaking to us, but we may not be able to listen or understand when he's speaking. Um, I think three and four go together. You have to trust and believe in God. You have to trust um, tr trust in God and believe that he'll do everything that he says he's, he's going to do. 
five, you have to love God with all your heart. That's with any relationship. You know, a relationship doesn't come without trust and love. So you have to love God in order to be in a relationship with people. Most people you're in a relationship with, you have love for, and you try to, you, you, you listen to them, you try to get to know them, try to trust them, and you try to hold them to what they say they're going to do. And number six, you have to love your neighbor. Um, I read this Bible verse in, um, in the Bible. It says, how can you love God whom you've never seen, but hate your brother whom you see whom whom you see every day. And that's a that's a good Bible verse um concerning having relationship with God because how can you hate your neighbor, hate your brother, hate your hate people you see every day and claim to love God. And lastly, you want to show the same love that you receive. So that's pretty much self-explanatory, but you know, that's what you want to do because the world, the people in the world um, should have more empathy, compassion towards one another. And here are three C's of having a real authentic relationship with God. Um, first, you want to connect with him. And in connecting with him, you want to um, you want to make a point to connect with him. Show him that you're, you're trying to connect with him. Um, set aside time for him. Make, make, it, make it a point to try to connect and, and get to know him. Um, second, you want to communicate. Um, having an ongoing two-way conversation. When you're in a relationship with someone, it's a two-way street. So you want to have, always keep a uh, two-way communication, conversation going, which means you have to listen and respond and do more listening than responding. Because I, I, I'm pretty sure that God, when we speak, God hears us. But when he speaks, we, we sometimes rarely listen or hear what he's trying to trying to get us to um, listen to. And lastly, you want to be committed to the relationship. Um, and with any relationship comes commitment. And... You, and with God, you have to be all in with him. Um, you have to spend time with him. Even when it's difficult, and even when things get hard, it, it just shows your faith. And, and, and like I said in one of my earlier slides, that it's rewarding to have, an, to have a relationship with God. Um, he's very powerful, and he, he, he knows the things that we need. So be committed in your relationship with him. And lastly, I want to talk about the benefits of having a per personal relationship with God. And these are my personal um, benefits that I've gained um, just trying to get a better relationship with God. Um, these are the things that, that has made me um, agree that uh, the relationship that God and I have is working, and one is, um, for one, has made me a better person, a better father too. Um, you know, having a relationship with God has slowed my anger, slowed the anger. I'm more open-minded to things, more um, outgoing, willing to do things because I know that there's someone who has my back and there's less stress on me. I'm not worried about many things in my life because I know he, he'll take care of me. So it's just, and it's made me closer to him. And I've been way more happier in my life since um, God has came into it. And 
show me who he really is. And um, that's all I want to talk about today. I don't want to persuade others to. If you don't have a relationship with God, try to try to get one. Try to find a way to connect with Him, and learn as much as you can about it. And um, this is my wild card speech on having a personal relationship with God. Um, so everyone have a good day. May God bless y'all and happy New Year. What we see with Michael's presentation is that with his delivery, he is extremely sincere about his faith-based presentation. And he also does an outstanding job with his storytelling structure with the graphics, benefits of having a personal relationship with God. Three C's of authentic relationship with God. I'm not sure what's going on with his webcam. It looks like he's holding it instead of having it in a fixed location. How to have a personal relationship with God. And I particularly like this because of all of the points that he has here. He can expand or contract in terms of time management in any different direction. For the most part, looking at the camera, you can tell that Michael is rather soft-spoken and honest throughout his presentation. It looks like his webcam is in reverse, but I'm not going to verify that because you can't really tell why it is important to have a relationship with God. Again, all the bullet points assist in terms of time management. Relationship with God is the most important relationship you can have. And that brings us back to his title slide. Whenever I was talking about a faith-based presentation, I wasn't originally thinking about Michael, even though he showed a lot of improvement and self-confidence during the term. I was actually in the back of my mind because I had not screened that in advance. I was thinking about this presentation, which is also faith-based, but is a persuasive speech video. And I'll just show you what it looks like. We're not going to play it. This is what I originally had in mind. That's what I was thinking of, finding a church family, which was a persuasive speech from fall 2020. Michael, as you could see from the upper left-hand portion of the screen, was fall intercession of 2020. So those are all of the wildcard speech videos that I'll be showing you today, but I wanted to include wildcard speech audio from at least one individual during the first summer session two years ago, in case any of you do not have access to a webcam. So this is the final wildcard speech we will be watching or listening to before we wrap things up for the day. is Kyle West and this is my wild card speech building habits first I want to talk about why I chose this topic about two or three years ago I read a book by Charles Duhigg called the power of habit and it really changed my life and inspired me to become more productive and create better habits for myself it has allowed me to accomplish the goals that I've set for myself what is a habit? A habit is a routine that is repeated regularly and tends to occur subconsciously. Now, in that sentence, the key word is subconscious. It's something that after you groove over a period of time, that it'll occur automatically and it happens without your permission. And some examples of this include brushing your teeth, tying your shoes, or you know, making that morning cup of coffee. The habit loop. The habit loop is what your brain <clears throat> has to go through in order for a habit to be created. This consists of a cue, a routine, and a reward, and each are equally important when creating a habit. The cue. The cue is what triggers the habit. It's the first thing that occurs whenever your brain is starting to create a habit. <clears throat> so this could be anything from a sound, a smell, or anything that triggers a behavior. 
So the mornings, whenever you first wake up, that is a trigger that'll tell you to, you know, whatever your morning routine is, go brush your teeth, make a mor morning cup of coffee, um, put your shoes on. Um, and a lot of people don't think about it. You put your shoes on a particular way. A lot of people will put either their left sock on first, then their right sock on, and then left shoe, right shoe, or vice versa. Um, and, you know, they do it without thinking about it. So the cue is what starts the behavior. Routine. This comes after the cue, and it is considered to be the behavior, you know, or what you physically, mentally, or emotionally do. <clears throat> this would be, you know, in the morning, this would be the actual act of brushing your teeth or actually making that cup of coffee. Now, these behaviors can be positive or they can be negative. It's just up to you. <clears throat> The last part of the habit loop is the reward. The reward is what you receive after the routine. This is the very last step. <clears throat> and, you know, whenever you get the reward, this is what really embeds in your brain, um, you know, what habit is you're going to create for yourself. And so the example I've been using, such as brushing your teeth, the reward for that would be that tingliness you get in your mouth and that clean sensation, um, which will reinforce the behavior. And now after a while, the cue and the reward kind of become intertwined. Um, and this is what creates that automatic behavior. So whenever you wake up in the morning and you go and brush your teeth, it's something that you don't really think about anymore. And that's what the habit loop does. So even though it ran a little bit short, I do like the idea of building habits as a wild card topic. I thought Kyle did an excellent job of creating slides, examining what is a habit, the habit loop, cue, routine, reward, and then his last slide, which is reward. When you're at the website, like I said, I go all the way down to the videos, they format slightly differently on Google Drive, but all different kinds of wildcard examples, not as many as demonstrative, informative, or persuasive, starting right there with the outline in first summer 2017 for asexuality and right next door, charmed first summer 2016, Whenever I say that you are my content creators, I'm not kidding, because there's a lot of room where we can include outlines or audio or video, both on my website and on my YouTube channel. I have three more bits of interactivity before we call it a day. My Twitter feed is first. As you're well aware, this is available with a link on my syllabus on the same line as a link to my website. I sent this tweet out yesterday under the hashtag of this course with a familiar face who looks very serious, but ideally authoritative and knowledgeable and authentic. But when you come down here, this was the tweet that I sent out related to this class. Quote, two recording screenshots, SPCH 1113, Introduction to Public Speaking, Summer 1, 2022. 16 of 19 scheduled course videos on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra with Professor Reppert for viewing and research purposes, monitored in the Grade Center for class participation. And here's where I placed screenshots of all of the courses that I showed you earlier today. We're going to be shortly having session 17, wildcard speech topic selection, added to that list. So here you have each of the two screenshots on my Twitter feed. Always trying to make it as user-friendly as possible for you to access course information. And that brings us to our second bit of interactivity. Zamori, during this recording session, 
sent me her persuasive speech. You'll recall yesterday that some of you have had issues trying to send me data, and I always try to stay on top of all of this. So Zamori, I just wanted you to know that I am going to play this persuasive presentation at the end of class tomorrow. But that's what it looks like, her loom on raising the minimum wage for her persuasive speech. So I do have it. And you can see from the timestamp, she did it well within the reach of getting it done. So that's not an issue at all. So Zamori will go ahead and play this, like I said, at the end of class tomorrow, which is officially listed as wild card speech day one. Let's return to Blackboard. I want to show you one more time the speaking order for the next two days. And there it is. Please make sure that if you are speaking on day one, that you get me your information by class time tomorrow. Always have in the back of your respective minds that the students are the content creators. I try to play as many of these presentations as possible. The one that was the true wild card for me today was Michael with his faith-based presentation because I had that one confused with something that was actually a persuasive speech. So his having a personal relationship with God speech showed a great deal of improvement with content, delivery, and visuals on his part, when in fact, the one that I had in the back of my mind that I showed you was the persuasive speech video that I don't think I played last week on finding a church family. But most of them are interchangeable in the respect that they are pretty well done. And that's going to be the setup for the next two days. So please make sure that you get your material to me, ASAP. So what have we looked at today? A number of wild card speeches, all of them except one, were recorded on video. And then an extended deep dive into self-evaluation speech critiques. And please make certain that you go back and watch the video of today's course because your template for putting together a self-evaluation speech critique may be a little bit different than what you saw. You certainly don't have to send me photos before your informative speech with hives and before your wildcard speech without. But ideally, I try to create an atmosphere which is going to foster your overall confidence, professionalism. Whenever we're playing these in class, I try to give you a positive constructive critique, which includes finding a place, how many times have you heard me say this, for your webcam on Loom, don't move it, and work your graphics around it. And then look at all of the videos from the past two days with yesterday, research, today, topic selection. How much more confident do these people appear because they've been doing it either during a fall intercession or during a summer session or during a spring or fall semester? And it just is second nature. The more you practice, the more polished you're going to appear. We all know it's not easy, but that's part of the process of learning which is why I don't say what you're doing are errors. They are issues to be improved upon. And that's the way I look at it. Let's finish in style. Let's make certain that you can be awarded high grades. Good luck in your respective wild card speech preparation processes with day one tomorrow and day two on the final day of the course. As for SPCH 1113, Introduction to Public Speaking during the first summer session of 2022. That concludes the recording session for today.